up? What's up, everybody? Simon here. I'm very excited to have Eddie Croft of B Street Boxing on the Ideal Hour podcast. Whoever may not know who Eddie Croft is, you could Google him. This is a champion boxer. He's a professional. Uh, and he's joining me here today because I used to go to B Street Boxing to do jiu-jitsu with Renato or Renato. And I don't go to that spot anymore. The jiu-jitsu portion is gone. Uh, but he still has B Street Boxing there. They may still do combat sports there. I don't know. Somewhat. They do it. They do it. Eddie, thank you for coming on the Ideal Hour, man. This is going to hey, be fun. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this. You know, me too. I've had uh, Toto on here. Uh, that was my, actually my first podcast that I did, uh, who is a purple belt. is Hanato's son. He, I sponsored him recently. He traveled to Europe. I bought his plane ticket so he could compete. I, I think he won one match and lost the second match. Um, I think you also trained him for doing uh, some combat sports, a little right. bit of sparring. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah he was going to fight um, on a show that Uriah Faber was putting on. Uh, he's going to have his first MMA fight on that. And his opponent pulled out, so oh, it, it didn't happen. He got scared now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think actually, I do think that's what happened. You do? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Toto's a monster. He would destroy me, and he's young and flexible and all that. Um, let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, give me a little bit of your boxing journey. Why? I mean, I know you've put in decades into boxing. Decades. Yeah, well, you yeah. know what? I started in martial arts, actually, okay. in Taekwondo. Okay. Um, so in as a kid, I you know, I, I was born in the city, 1969, and then okay. in, in 1974, uh, there was a theater on Market Street. My mom... My mom's from Japan. She didn't really speak English that well, so we used to, you know, see a lot of Japanese films at the theater in in Japantown. A lot of samurai films, and on Market Street, went to uh, see Enter the Dragon. So okay. Enter the Dragon was still playing in the theater. So this is crazy. Know, so this is how you you know it was a long time ago. Good movie. Um, yeah, it was Bruce like I, I must have seen the movie like two hundred times. <laughs> yeah, I watched it uh, not two hundred, yeah, but probably at least ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, after that, that's all I wanted to do was martial arts, and so we moved to San Mateo a little bit after that, um, and about a mile away from my school or from my house was a school, Mikowski Taekwondo. And I started there when I was oh. five years old. Oh, wow. So, you know, trained there until, you know, basically throughout my boxing career, really, I was training martial arts as well. Wow. Um, I started boxing in my senior year of high school. I was, you know, I wanted to become a kickboxer. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought I better become a better boxer if I <laughs> okay. want to, to kickbox. Um and you know, there, it just so happened there was a guy at our at our Taekwondo school. His brother was a, a former professional boxer, probably retired maybe one or two years pre um, pre previously, mm -hmm. or prior to that, I should say. And uh, his name is Johnny Nava, and okay. from Pacifica, and you know, fought some pretty good guys you know, coming up a, a, as a you know a local professional boxer. And you know, his brother was training at the school, and I asked him. To train me, right? That's a big, and, yeah. big ask. Yeah. But you asked. That's so good. <laughs> I, I asked him. So he started showing me. He started coming down, you know, to our school, Taekwondo school, and started showing me how to box a little. And then he said, hey, you know, you should come up to the gym in the city, Newman's Gym. Is it still around Newman's? No. Newman's Gym I, uh, opened up in, like, 1935, mm. and it closed in 91. Oh, wow. Right? Um so you trained there? Yeah, at I trained. Yeah, I trained at Newman's and with was, him. Yeah, it was in in the tenderloin. You know, nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, was it always not so tender the tenderloin, or is it, it worse uh, now? It's pretty much always been like <laughs> it's that. Always been like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you know, people like make a lot of it. Yeah. Um, but it was it was, it was bad then. Yeah. You know, then too. Uh, yeah. I I learned quickly being a kid from the suburb that yeah. you can't leave anything in your car. I didn't, yeah. you know, like I didn't yeah. know, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, up, yeah, you yeah. Know? from the suburbs. So, yeah, from the yeah. Su you know, from <laughs> like, San Mateo. I didn't know. I left change in the, you know, in the ashtray, yeah. and next thing I know, you know, the car was broken into. I'm like, Dude, what, they, can they, you can you leave stuff in the car in San Mateo nowadays, or is that also <clears> skeptical? <throat> Um, it's not smart to. It's not smart, it's not smart <laughs> okay. to. Right? Before it was never yeah, a concern, yeah. though. Yeah, it was not a concern. Yeah, yeah, 
Uh, well, you know, growing yeah. up, yeah. like you, we could leave the doors unlocked, yeah, right? We left the doors unlocked all it's day. It's fucking so crazy. It's just, you know, yeah. it's a different time. Yeah. So, like, people, you know, they always say you got to adjust to the times or get left behind, right? Mm -hmm. So that that that's one of those things. Yeah. So, yeah, I started training um, at Newman's in my senior high school in, in 86. And... Uh, you know, in, in 1988, I fought my first amateur boxing fight in, in the Golden Gloves, and mm. I won. Wow. Um, and then from that point on, I pretty much thought, you know what? I want to fight for a living, right? And I, But more than anything, I want to be famous, right? Okay. So, so uh, people know boxers. Yeah. Nobody knows kickboxers. It's true. Right. So Actually, I, you know, it's really interesting because if you really think about it, and we're going to get back to that, if you think about it, kickboxing is such a high intensity, high level, level action type pack fight because if you look at UFC fights, people start booing when it goes to the ground. Right. Khabib's like mauling someone or whoever else, and they're like, they want to see him stand up. Right. That's what kickboxing is, you know, mostly, right? Uh, why yes is it not and as no. why yes is it and not no i don't you know what kickboxing just it never it was going never was able to to grab hold in, why in the why US. do you think um i don't know you know i i don't know like really i mean if if you if you watch like the level of fighting between boxers like high level boxers and high level kickboxers that the, the the skill level and the precision mm -hmm. of technique is is just not com day. it's not comparable, mm -hmm. right? And it's the same thing with with UFC or, mm -hmm. or MMA, right? If you look at the precision of punches or strikes, mm -hmm. or, you know, striking that you see in boxing as opposed to MMA, there mm -hmm. is night and day. Yeah. Now, a very interesting thing that I heard um that i you know i would I, say max holloway is like the only boxer or fighter mma fighter that kind of feels like there's technicality behind them yeah with but like i mean but that's only because <laughs> like of of you know he's you're, facing, you're comparing so. you're comparing him to the guys he's fighting right yeah, yeah. so like he can't make it in boxing or yeah. couldn't no, otherwise no. he would have right no. and so like the thing is when the less weapons you have, the harder it is, mm -hmm. right? So when you have a bunch of weapons like MMA, you can you can grapple, you mm -hmm. can punch, you can kick, you mm -hmm. can knee, you can elbow, right? Yes, it's brutal, especially when you get on the ground yeah. and there's ground and pound, elbows yeah. on the ground. So that that's that's brutal. But like when you have to stand in front of somebody for three minutes straight, for three minutes, <laughs> but not only three minutes, yeah. but for championship yeah. fights, yeah. twelve rounds, yeah. thirty-six minutes, yeah. right? Where you only have your left hand and your right hand, yeah. and right? and that and you can't go anywhere, right? Yeah, I mean that's so, why you were hitting me with a noodle stick, and, right. and when I took a couple right. of classes, with right? It. <laughs> hey, you know, get your hands up, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that you know the thing is, and you know people say, well, you know, MMA is much harder. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, uh, not really. Um, it is difficult in its own right, yeah. and you have lots of things that you have to not necessarily master, but get very proficient at. Um, but in boxing, you have yeah. to master left hand and right hand. And that's all you got. That's all you got. And you're blocking and hitting with that, right. and it's there's not much holding. Right. Like and it, you you're know. not allowed to, yeah. right? So you can hold for a second, and the yeah. ref comes and breaks yeah. you. You right? can't take like a, a minute to yourself, like we see it in MMA or in jiu-jitsu or anything yeah. else. You could lay on top of somebody and catch your breath, right? You know, what I mean? and, then, and then get back into it on the second win. You can't do that in boxing. No. Yeah. So you went. So you decided. You said, "Wait a minute, kickboxing's not as popular. I want to be famous. I'm going to continue boxing. What's going on with that?" Yeah. So yeah. yeah so I, I, I. Stuck with boxing. Um, I end up winning two more Golden Glove titles. Wow. Um, so I won 88. I lost in 89. Ooh. I won 90 and 91. Oh, wow. And then um, after the 91 National Golden Glove Tournament, I, I lost in the quarterfinals to a guy named Julian Wheeler, okay. who ended up uh, representing the U.S. in the '92 Olympics. Olympics. Wow! Yeah. So he was yeah. a, he was a yeah, yeah. So so that was, <clears throat> you know, that was my last amateur fight. 
Um, and I said, you know what, I'm ready to turn pro. And so, uh, you know, I came back home <laughs> from Davenport, Iowa, or not Davenport, from Des Moines, Iowa, and, you know, started, you know, the process to turn pro. What is the process of turning pro? Like, I mean, for someone that doesn't know much, including myself, actually. Well, well you know what? <laughs> uh, the, the, the funny thing is it doesn't require, like, people, they, does it require a lot? Is it yeah. difficult to become a pro fighter? No, it's mm -hmm. not. You have to be in good health. You have to take, like, a bunch of metal, medical tests, like, mm -hmm. you get an uh, MRI on your brain. You mm -hmm. also have to have, like, a neurological exam with a neurologist. Mm -hmm. Um, ophthalmology, um, mm. ophthalmology for your exam, vision. yeah, for your vision. Mm -hmm. um, regular physical EKG. Mm. Yeah. Uh, just to get it out of yeah, the way. Yeah, just, Do you, you need get, a sponsor? So you, you got to get those medicals every year, right? And so, like, oh, there, every year. Yeah, okay. you have to do it once a year. Mm -hmm. So and there's a place. There's a couple places. There's one down in Southern California, and one in Fresno, where you can do all of everything in one day, and it costs about eight. Eight to nine hundred bucks. Oh, that's not bad. Right. So it's you know, yeah. it's, I, I mean, for some people it's a lot. Yeah. You know, for you know most starving yeah, 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 fighters, yeah, yeah. it's starving, a lot, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, you get like a sponsor or yeah. whatever. They, you know. But you know what? If there's a will, there's a way, right? right? We. I mean, I, I wasn't born with money either. But right. if I really wanted that, I'd go get it. You know right. what I mean? Right. So, so um, no. But I understand. Uh, there's a lot of guys that dedicate so much time to boxing or any other of these sports martial arts sports that that's like their job it's almost like a job and their real job is almost like a second job right you know because right. the mind it's like, is always at, yeah, at your, the gym your mind yeah your mind is always at the gym and yeah. you're like trying you're looking at the bigger picture yeah right you know i'm chasing like, a dream. I wanna, yeah i want to be the champ yeah. of the world yeah. you know i'm want to be on you know fight on tv I, I, so you're always like looking for something else and like your job is sort of like your side gig that is supporting your dream i agree i agree i there's even like listen uh when i talk i'm a novice i'm not a professional i don't want, i know how people get with you know like oh how good are you right. this and that novice the, i'm a father old father now i feel old uh but there are even guys at the gym, even in jiu-jitsu, where I go now, which is Ralph Gracie, San Francisco, mm -hmm. and I was going to your place in Ralph Gracie, San Mateo. I mean, they're there two times a day, et cetera, and I could tell, like, that's what they want. That's their mentality. That's what they want to do. Um, and, you know, boxing has this pro circuit as well. I don't. I would say jiu-jitsu is kind of, like, coming up. Um, when you decided to go pro, did you need to get a sponsor or does someone need to get a sponsor nowadays to like help you with those costs or, uh, well, you know, I, I had a manager, um, so you know, he was like a sponsor. He would pay for those things. Okay. Um, but you know, boxing, you know, managers, yeah. They take a big cut of your check, yeah, right? Yeah. So like they're they're gonna recoup it one way or yeah, another, yeah. right? Um, my manager also would put on fights, so he put on fights at the Berlin Game Marriott mm -hmm. um, and at the, at the fairgrounds in San Mateo, mm -hmm. um, like they they call it the event center, right? Mm -hmm. So he put on fights that I I headlined. And, um, you know, he, he paid for those, yeah. right? He used and somebody he else's, he used somebody yeah. else's promotional license, but like it was coming out of his pocket to, you know, to yeah. put those fights on, um, you know, and recoup, you know, he recouped most of the money, most of the time, um, through ticket sales and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think we might've lost money on one show, but mm -hmm. you know, most of the shows he made money. How, how many fights have you been in Eddie? Uh, I, uh, I think my final record ended up 22 and six and one draw. So it's an incredible yeah. record. I mean, yeah. that's a pretty good record. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I, I was, I, you know, I was 21 and one at one point. Really? And then, and then you know, I fought for, uh, I fought for a title a couple of times, mm -hmm. a world title. Mm -hmm. And then I lost, you know, those two fights and then I didn't fight again for a few years. Why? Um, well, I got an eye injury training yeah. before my first title fight. 
Is that in tra happen in training? It happened in training. Yeah, I've always been right. meaning to ask, yeah, but yeah. you know, I never, you yeah. know, you come no, to the gym, you don't no, ask that no, stuff. No, but I, I think I, now is a perfect time. Yeah, no, people ask me all the time. You, know? you might be the second, I don't know, I might, uh, Jiu Jitsu coach Tay may have an eye injury too. I don't know, he wears an eye patch. We have to clear that up at one point. But um, uh, what happened? You, just in training, you caught a hook or what? Yeah, I, you hmm. know what? I don't really know. Um, I don't remember a specific punch mm -hmm. uh it, and, and you know what it could be an eye injury could have mm -hmm. been neurological i don't okay. really know okay right uh, i do know that i got hit one day in training and i was like sure. man my vision's a little blurry okay right and then i went home i woke up the next day and it was fine i'm like okay i'm back yeah. and then i you know went to train i sparred again and boom i got hit and like man my vision's blurry And it never, it never got better. It never got better. And then I was, I was looking in the mirror and I was kind of like going like this. Yeah. And I noticed that my left eye wasn't moving the so same way lazier. as my right eye. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then over time, my eyelid started drooping. But I see. Have you ever had it like try to do a surgery on it? I've or? had uh, four surgeries on this eye. Oh, and that's it. And now, yeah, at this point, you're like, screw that. Yeah. Yeah. Who the hell wants to do a surgery anymore? Um, That's that you know. That's the risk of boxing, right? I mean, yeah. boxing you're getting hit in the head, and that's why I, I think we can. W w look, I want to get to this question eventually, but it's like with the youth today. I saw you were training a young kid. He looked pretty fit. I think he was applying for the U.S. Olympics. He had a USA shirt. Yeah, or like Dante. Dante. Kirkman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's gonna be a star, huh? We're I hoping. believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Good. And you know, and and like I tell people. Man, you know, boxing is is like a very unforgiving sport. Mm -hmm. And my, my wife, Casey, um, she is also a professional boxer. I saw she won like yeah. a tournament in the Philippines or something uh, like that. She this. won a fight in the Philippines, in, yeah. yeah. She's, a, she's, a, she's a top 10 oh, wow. um, super flyweight, 115-pound uh, weight class. So, and she, she fought for a world title. Uh, she's fought for a world title three times, and she hasn't been successful yet. But yeah. we're gonna, we're gonna You're get, still working we're, on gonna, we're gonna get one this so, year. So, you got to watch what you say around her at home. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I don't want any of that smoke. You don't want any of the smoke. smoke. She's still competing. No. All right, that's good. That's cool, man. And well, obviously, we're gonna link everything below. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm, I'm glad you cleared that up. I'm sure she'll watch this and yeah. she'll say that's right. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh. So yeah. My. You know. And and just yeah. like. My wife Casey will say, "This is an unforgiving sport. The, yeah. the mo like there has to be something a little off for, for you, you to, to want to do it, right? And especially like a kid like yeah. Dante, right? Yeah. Dante comes from, you know, a pretty pretty good, well-to-do family, right? Yeah, he does. And okay. and uh, his mother, Stanford graduate. Oh wow." Uh, his older brother, Stanford graduate. Wow. He's currently Dante's currently going to Stanford. Okay, right, and he's still training and, and, this hard. And yeah, he trained, still trains as hard. Um, we just got back from the Olympic trials, and you know he made it to the semifinals oh. and lost. Um, he lost to the eventual eventual winner of the mm -hmm. Olympic trials, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I, but he's. Ever since he's been a kid, he's wanted to be, be a professional boxer. Great, great question for you. I grew up in the city, and um, you know, I had to have the dog in me to to fend off some of these Russians and mm -hmm. and Latin people and all this. And I ran around the streets, right? It's kind of a little different uh, mentality. I don't look like much, but uh, I had to fend them off. Do you feel like uh, when there is a young kid? Uh, that's coming up in a tougher area or the city or like a tougher environment, they tend to have more of the dog in them or tougher? Or do you think it's all mental? Like Dante is an example of like, hey, Stanford mom, Stanford brother, you're going to Stanford, but you seems to have a dog in them. Uh, because you've I, been around well, a lot well, of kids. I, I, yeah, and, and like me being from the suburbs, same tale, but I still like, you know, I grew up in, in a neighborhood, Shoreview, that I hmm. rep proudly, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and... Shoreview in the 70s was a real blue collar okay. neighborhood. Okay. Right now, like, you know, so in, in 1974, my parents bought that house. It was 35,000 bucks. Yeah, right? best investment right? they ever yeah, made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so, you know, now I like they're selling houses over there for a million dollars. And I'm like, wow, and, <laughs> you know, the neighborhood's changed, right? <laughs> um, 
But it was a blue collar neighborhood <laughs> and there was fights all the time. Mm-hmm. The middle school I went to, Bayside, mm-hmm. uh, was, you know, known as like being a real rough school and it was like I used to say it was like gladiator school. <laughs> and I, I remember uh, I tell people this story too. When I was in sixth grade, there was an eighth grader that used to drive to school. Oh well. Right. Because he was 16. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah, he's been there <laughs> right? for a minute. He'd been there for a minute, oh, right? He was the most popular eighth grader, probably. Right? And so, you know, it was just like, and it was a different, you know, just a different time, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, like, I feel like at times, uh, and really what it is, it's like, you know, kids that come from, you know, a, a good background or a little bit of money, right? They they discover that boxing is is hard, yeah. right? You have to, you know, put in a lot of time and mm-hmm. energy and sacrifice for something that, you know, you most likely won't achieve. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, and as you said, um, it's not forgiving. You right. know what I mean? Uh, it it's a brutal toll on your body. Um, I personally never uh, really got into boxing, and I, and I think. Boxing is such a technical sport, as you mentioned. I think it's way more technical than a lot of, including jiu-jitsu, which I've been doing the past three years. I, I do feel it has technicality to it. But there's something about um, not, you know, I, I notice in jiu-jitsu, especially weight is a big thing, right? Uh, obviously in <laughs> boxing as well. But yeah. but when you could lay on someone and rest, you know, and, and there, or stall or whatever, you just can't do that in boxing, I feel like. And that creates just like, you, you, I guess what I'm referring to is like, you can't hug someone and just hold them there. Right. And it, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, yeah, so you can't clinch for yeah. very long yeah. in, mm-hmm. in boxing. The ref will break you. If yeah. you clinch too many times, they'll start taking points away yeah. and you're going to lose, yeah. right? Um, so is cardio the number one thing in boxing that you train your guys? Like, is it... <clears throat> like on your priority list, where would you put cardio? Because 12 rounds or six rounds or whatever you're going at, it's it's not easy. Even three rounds, three. like for yeah. an amateur fight, yeah. um, I would say, yeah, like being in, in peak physical condition is one of the highest. Is If not the highest, it's, you know, number two, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh yeah, you can get away with, you know, in jujitsu. You can, you know, I see a lot of those guys, you know, <laughs> and they're like not in the best of shape, right? They're right. And, you know, so the dad bots. Yeah. Especially if yeah. you're if you're really experienced, yeah. you know, you can find ways to stall and and kind of, you know, and hold and hold people in, mm-hmm. in positions where you're not vulnerable. Um, Especially in the gi, right? Because you got all this cloth to hold on right. to, you know. And in in boxing, that you know, the referee just won't allow that for very mm-hmm. long, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, there, it, there's nowhere to hide, and and it's, you know. it could get scary. Yeah. Um, you know who? Uh, my brother-in-law Lawrence. He's so funny. Um, he's always talking highly, and you know, he, I guess he has dreams beyond. But he's always. Uh, I'm going to, to the gym to train with Eddie. I'm going to the gym. And then I start going to the gym. And I'm like, Lawrence, I don't see you here. Where are you at, man? You're like saying you're going to be there. You're not. So, Lawrence, if you ever watch this, Eddie's going to call you out right now. He yeah. wasn't going as much as he was talking about. Right, Eddie? Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, would, he would show up. But, yeah. like, you know what? I, like, I also knew, uh, you know, I said, Lawrence, man, you don't, you don't need to, like, get punched in your head. So <laughs> this is it. Stop that. You just train <laughs> and then, you know, get in better shape and learn the craft but i'm not letting anybody hit you i got you smart <laughs> smart thank you for that because i already have a hard time explaining things to him so it's uh you saved them um how do you know what what's a good boxer like when you look at a prospect like let's say not even an employee and you have some employees at b street boxing or people that work there as well but when you look at a prospect of a, a potential candidate that you want to bring up or you want to promote what what are you looking for like what do they have in your mindset or in your like look or is it the eyes or like what do you you know what what can you tell by a person uh you know what i you you never you never know really wow you never know okay right like and everybody also learns at their own pace okay um the the main thing I, I well, I take this back. So the the one thing that that 
you really want more than anything is like them to be dedicated and to want it more than anything else. Okay. So, you know, once you see someone is willing to put in the time Mm -hmm. um, and dedicate themselves to like putting them themselves through hell, right? To one, get in shape to two, learn the craft to three, you have to, you know, it's, you know, you, you always say, um, you know, people say in sports or whatever, like losing, losing is a learning experience, right? And I say, well, yeah, that is true. It is true. Um, but in boxing, when you lose, it's because you got beat up, right? <laughs> yeah. right? You got yeah, beat yeah, up. Yeah, so yeah. The, the learning experience is, is painful, physically yeah. painful, yeah. not only emotionally yeah. and mentally painful, it's physically it's, painful. And your face feels right? it. Right, <laughs> in your face, your body, you feel it everywhere, right? Yeah. And so, and even after your body heals, you still feel it emotionally, right? Mm. So it, it's it's really painful. Um, what? So like anybody that's willing to put themselves through that and can get through that is is someone that I feel like um, they they have a shot. They have, they could correct it, move it, and and go on again. Um, <laughs> how do you encourage someone to keep going when when they feel like they're out, like they're not? not feeling it anymore do you have you had instances where that person's like hey i just don't want to do this anymore like i don't you don't i don't i I don't i it i don't encourage them to keep going i see if they don't want to do it yeah then don't do it it. right (laughs) don't do it i like yeah you're right you know what and they're like i don't know i don't know if i want to do this anymore i'm like you're right don't do it anymore that's awesome that's the best all right and so like it, I, I tell people, as soon as you have an ounce of doubt in mm-hmm. your mind is when you're going to get hurt, right? And mm-hmm. boxing is also something where, you know, you can take one punch and it'll change your life. It could end your life, yeah. right? One good shot, you yeah. might not ever wake up again. So mm-hmm. There's a risk of you know, that, yeah, and it happens. So, yeah, so so if, if you don't want to do this and you're not 1,000, like my wife loves to say, 1,000% <laughs> committed... <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, if you're not, if you're not committed fully, then you know what? Stay away. Go back to school, get a job, dig ditches, do something, anything but but this. Yeah, man. It's it's crazy. It's like why put your body through that? But then it's so I think uh, addicting as well in a sense where you're you're um, it, not only the camaraderie but also the the way you feel after a good training session or even a competition or a, a match. Um, let me ask you, for me, when, when I started, I did, before jiu-jitsu, I did Krav Maga, which is like a, is, is, you probably know what it is, but for the audience, Israeli military fighting yeah. or whatever. And a lot of um, SEALs, and, and I'm not, again, a professional at that either, but a lot of like military does it as well in some regard. Yeah. Um, I did it. Because I was a little guy, and I'm about the same size as you, uh, maybe a little bigger than me. A little bigger than a little bit. I think you'll kill me, Eddie. <laughs> but but uh, I did it for self defense. Like for me, right. my motive. There's no Krav Maga competitions. It's not very technical in terms of like precision. It's more of like in and out combat, aggression, and just survival. Yeah. And it's good. I think it's great for women for self defense as well, because like. You know, they teach you how to gouge an eye out or whatever in a very bad situation. I did it for self-defense. Do you do you have, like, people coming in that want to improve their confidence in self-defense? Or um, have you been personally in, like, fights on the street where you're like, thank God I have my boxing skill? And you don't have to name anything particular. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I... It, <laughs> I, yeah, I've been I've been in fights, yeah. you know, a lot in street fights, um, you know, and like I said, I grew up in martial arts, so you know, I I am I was a pretty good street fighter. Good, so, <laughs> so tell me. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and and boxing actually made me an even better street fighter. So yeah, I I, I I'm happy or I'm thankful that that I, you know, had that. Uh, that upbringing 
and it has saved me a few times huh? a few times yeah that's good to hear yeah. <laughs> same with me especially in the the days like i mean i'm 40 now but in the days where 20 years ago or you know somewhere around that time uh no one knew what fighting it was either boxing or it, there wasn't much mma right like uh not as much yeah as it is M today. mma yeah. yeah i i i i remember watching the first couple of ufcs mm -hmm, right and, and i i was i was still uh boxing at the time um and i was like looking at it going hey who's this these guys are not very good <laughs> well they had but, a fat guy yeah, that couldn't go like one guy, minute right? yeah you yeah, remember him? yeah he, got he, just the, yeah. he got kicked in the teeth by the by the french savat guy <laughs> yep. yeah the, the, you know he tried to tackle the savat guy and he fell into the cage and then they kicked him in the mouth and his teeth it. fell out Right, and I and I remember there were no rules, and, and there were no weight classes and stuff like that, and uh, and so, <clears throat> you know, I I was looking at it back then, going, man, you know what, it, if if they're guys my size, you know, I'd you know, because I was like a good martial artist yeah, too, right, it's like yeah, right, and so, um, even well, by the time like they started having weight classes you know i was already you know yeah. an older Too guy older, by that yeah. time you know by that and i was i don't know maybe 40 close to 40 when when the ufc mm -hmm. i forgot what i think it was the wec it was mm -hmm. called with mm -hmm. the lighter weight classes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the ufc bought them and um you know like they had they had 125 pounds mm -hmm. right that was you know my, is that your weight i was you know i right. fought like 122 125 you know i probably could have fought lower a uh, lower weight class but it you know i always tell people it, it, you know what if they would have had that you know, when you know when i was fighting i i probably would you would try it. it i probably yeah do you think toto's gonna do a fight one day or <clears> what um he should he should yeah i mean Man, he keeps I, talking about it i keep telling him why aren't you doing it yeah, I mean, he should, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, like because like with his his you know jujitsu skills and, and his strength, mm -hmm. you know, he just needs to learn a, you know a little boxing and and mm -hmm. you know how to how to check kicks and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and he, he'll he'll be real successful at it. Do you think boxing is still like uh, I'm noticing a lot of kids and a lot of kids going into jujitsu ju lately, and mm -hmm. I think it's because of the fact that you don't get hit in the head, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe parents of all nationalities are a little worried about that and see why, right? It's, it's you know, you're yeah. going to get hit, right. If, right? No matter what, even right. if you do it a week, <laughs> yeah. right? So um, so do you think jiu-jitsu is becoming maybe the dominant sport where boxing used to be kind of like that sport where the dad would go, hey, you, know, you need to toughen up, I need to take you to boxing, you know, against bullying or whatever, yeah, I uh, karate. Well, I don't I don't know if jujitsu will ever be jujitsu itself will yeah. ever be. It might be, but uh, like a, a big sport like MMA will be. MMA is, is you know, is yeah. is a huge sport. But you you see all the top MMA guys, they want to box. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's more right? money. There's more. Uh, the yeah. top end makes yeah, more yeah. money. Yeah. Right. A lot more. Right. Yeah. A lot more. So. So. I, I tell people, you know, if if you're like... Why is that, Eddie? Why is it that... <clears throat> is it the contracts or is it just top-end boxing? It's just well, a worldwide type thing. That's one. But two, um, MMA is kind of a monopoly. It's pretty close mm -hmm. to a monopoly, right? Mm -hmm. UFC. Yeah. And it, it's, you know, they, yeah. they control everything, yeah. right? So they control the amount of money they're going to pay where in boxing it's you know it's not that way there's you're independent kind of you you're signed to a promotional mm -hmm. uh, like i was saying earlier we're going to talk a little boxing business <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, or the business of boxing um no you're signed to a promoter most of the time right mm -hmm. you have a promoter some guys are free agents mm -hmm. um but you know the promoters you know the, they all are competing against one another, right? So they have to because you know your you're, the boxer signed to a promotional contract for a certain amount of time or a certain amount of fights. Mm -hmm. There are certain accelerators, like if they win a championship, then the 
the the the the contract gets extended for another few fights, right? Or X, yeah. either X amount of fights or X amount of years, right? And a lot of times, um, the fighters will kind of like either if if it's time, then they might sit out. If they're unhappy with their contract, they might just okay, you know what? I'm just gonna keep in training, but I'm not gonna fight. Mm -hmm. Or if they're unhappy with a contract and it's a it's a number of fights. They'll they'll fight and they'll finish that they'll finish out that contract mm -hmm. and then you go to the highest bidder mm -hmm. right so there's you know but can you like <clears throat> but in I, I think in MMA you can't really endorse yourself with like uh, outside brands right like you can't in boxing you could do that yeah. right so they yeah. collect a yeah million, but there's not like not the the sponsorship. Mm -hmm deals are not as they're just not, not there that. for boxing right where it you know so how does a boxer that's at the top make so much money is it just the cut off the ticket sales cut and off the pay -per ticket sales pay-per-view and it's a big cut i would imagine it's a decent cut, decent I, cut. I think i don't you yeah. know what I, I i've never you know really got to that yeah got to that level yeah. Yeah. um where i was getting a cut of pay-per-views yeah. i did i fought on pay-per-view once but i wasn't getting a cut of it so. you fought on showtime is that the uh the, no i fought on hbo pay-per-view okay okay yeah. have you fought showtime too or was it hbo no oh, wow uh, I guess cool. at the time hbo was you know yeah, the, the, the it yeah it was the thing right? wow i like hbo Sopranos my favorite show. I just want to throw it out there. Um, um, let me ask you a question. You were training a Russian or Ukrainian boxer. Uh, was, Russian. He was supposed to fight uh, Canelo. Or, well, he or? was he was in the same weight class, and he was, um, and he was you know like the number one contender. Mm -hmm. But he had to fight an eliminator fight, mm -hmm. like, and and he fought an elimination fight. He ended up losing to oh. a Cu to a Cuban guy. Okay. Um, I can't remember his name right now off the top of my head. And uh, but the Cuban guy has been the number one contender for a while. For a while, and but like you know, Canelo's never gonna fight him. Yeah, yeah Canelo yeah. doesn't need to. You yeah. know, that's another thing about boxing business, right? Canelo's such a big star, he yeah. doesn't need to. So if if he has to relinquish the title that this guy is the number one contender for, um, then you know, Canelo goes, okay, here, yeah. you know, I, I don't, I don't need that. I'm yeah. Canelo. Yeah. Right. I so, got a brand. Yeah. It's kind of like what Conor McGregor is <clears throat> doing now. He's not really right. <laughs> fighting anymore, but he's making millions and he's like, mm -hmm. why take another L right. if I could just sell a couple beers or a lot of beers and a lot and of whiskey. whiskey right? or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 That's and so it's a brand. So they both build a brand. Let me ask you, uh, were you Mayweather or Pacquiao? Which side? Mayweather. Were you? Mayweather. You think he is the most technical for his, uh, as for, a, as for, for, yeah, for this or that generation, generation. Yeah. I mean, you know, do I think that he could have, like, I don't think, I don't think Mayweather would have beaten Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he would have beat Thomas Hearns, mm -hmm. you know, like those guys. Um, you know, but. And that's the thing about boxing. If you don't want to fight someone or you're afraid, let's say, or you're worried about, you don't have to technically. Sign up, right? Yeah. These guys, yeah. look, these guys <laughs> at, at that level, yeah. right? Nobody's afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I Nobody, see. people I say, see. oh, they've he just doesn't want to life. fight them, right? Mm -hmm. And they've been fighting their whole life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They've been fighting since they've been little kids. Yeah, yeah. They're not afraid. Yeah. Right? It, it's not, you know, it, it's not, not scared as it, a man at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they, that, it's a business decision. It's a, you know, like, why do I want to fight him? Mm -hmm. Right? And a lot of times, you know, people say, well, you know, what's the other guy bring to the table? Why why do I want to fight him? Right? Okay, well, you know what? Because uh, this guy, ha oh, he owns a title, right? Or he's he's a champion. Um, he's also popular. So, you, I mean, you're looking to make the biggest fights possible yeah. once you get to that level, yeah. right? You so, you, you know, you want to make the biggest fights possible to, to you know, make the, the most income, yeah, yeah. right? So why... Why would I want to fight a guy that's you know that, that's dangerous, mm -hmm. right? But you know I know it's going to be a difficult fight, right? But no one knows him, yeah. And I'm gonna make half the money. Yeah, I'm gonna do all right? the promotion. Yeah, yeah, I might yeah, possibly yeah. Right. lose, right? Um, and and, and know, so yeah, it's not. It yeah, sense. it's not. It's not fear. It's mm -hmm. just like it doesn't make sense. Money and money. Money is probably yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's talk about some of your fights. I mean. Um, 
you've been, you mentioned in some street fights, you've obviously been in the ring quite a lot. Um, <laughs> what was your mindset going into um, the ring or in any fight where you were like, I know everybody gets nervous, even in slightest competitions. How do you combat that? Or what, what, what's a good mindset to go into a cage match or a battle fight? Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I tell this story a lot to people. Um, when I was back in the dress room, I'm warming up and shadow boxing, hitting mitts, and I always feel really strong and I'm ready to go. You know, okay, <laughs> let's go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> and then as we're walking to the ring, I would feel really, really weak. Oh, my God. It would just, like, all, like, you know, my adrenaline is just, like, seemed like I just got sapped out of my body. <laughs> I would get into the ring and start looking around, you know, just trying to warm, stay warm, you know. And I would say, okay, Eddie, you've got yourself in this situation again. <laughs> you told yourself that you would never do it again. This is the last time you're going to do this. Right. And then as soon as the bell rang, I would forget about it and just like, be, you know, just supremely focused on my opponent. And and, you know, I would always go back to what my trainer would say to me. And now I say to all the fighters, um, you know, the guy's got a left hand and he's got a right hand. If he throws the left, you know what to do. If he throws the right, you know what to do, right? That's awesome. And so as soon as you, like, make it that simple, you know, and I mean, I'm, and I got to make it that simple to myself, you know, while, the, while I'm, you know, fighting these nerves, um, then, then I would forget it all. And, and then, technique and, takes over. Yeah, yeah, and technique takes over. <laughs> and then after the fight, you know, I'm usually, okay, I can't wait to the next one. Is it? When you would say, hey, this is my last fight, is it because of, like, that butterfly feeling or, like, why am I yeah. doing this? Yeah. Got it. And then as soon as the fight ends, you're like, all right, I could do better next one. Yeah, I, yeah. Got I got you. I got you. Yeah. I, I don't know. I still, for some reason, even, like, jiu-jitsu tournaments, I got one this Saturday, and I still get the little butterflies before. A lot of it is, like, making weight. I'm, like, two, three pounds over because I was traveling and didn't really right. watch it. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, why do I do this to myself at 40 to get this $4 you know, metal. <laughs> That's what it that, is. That I paid a, that I paid a hundred yeah, bucks for. Hundred bucks for, and it's like they're giving some out, and this. And I'm like, this is crazy. Um, so, B Street Boxing, you've been running this business for many years. I mean, I've had friends that are older than I am uh, that would go there. You know, all sorts of people go there. You're like a San Mateo legend. Everybody knows B Street Boxing. I mean, if you're in any type of martial art. Um, how many years have you had that place? Uh, I opened November 1st, 2008 was the first day I opened. Okay, yeah. so you've had it quite a while. And and it's kind of what I love about it is it's got this underground vibe to it. This underground. Yeah, it's in no? the basement. <laughs> I know, I know, but that's cool. You know, it's not like... It, it, even even in uh, when we were doing jiu-jitsu and we were doing it in the back of your place, it just felt... Kind of like the speakeasy of jujitsu, you know what I mean? Not this like glam. Right. Everywhere is glam now, like glammed up or nice mats, new this, new that. Changing rooms. Some people are putting saunas in there and so forth. And I just love that like rugged uh, aspect to it. So I do miss it. Um, what do What do you say to the parents that are trying to now get their kids in martial arts? Like, is it how important? Obviously, it's been important in your life. But how is it important? How important is it that a boy and, and maybe a girl get into martial arts nowadays, especially with what's going on around everywhere. Uh, you know what? I definitely think that martial arts is is like good for everyone. Not only you know people that like you know have, maybe have confidence issues or you know like looking to get in shape. It's just good for everybody. Um, you know, one you learn to take care of yourself. You know, really take care of your body. Uh, but most of all, it really like it, it teaches you to respect other people, yeah. right? I, you get humbled yeah. if you don't, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, not only that though, like you realize that everybody has challenges, and everybody, you know, is you know working hard to achieve a goal, mm -hmm. right? Um, while battling yeah, something. Yeah. While battling something, mm -hmm. right? And so, 
it, it you know you you have you learn to have some empathy for for other people and and you know you look at yeah, you know what I've been watching you here for you know since I've been here and I can respect what you're doing because I know how difficult it is I respect that yeah I, I agree I, it, it also brings all walks of life yeah. I think kids and even adults, they find some type of friendships in these gyms and they, they tend to hang out. And I've created great friendships even at the B Street um, area and uh, B Street Boxing. And, um, you know, some of these guys went to one gym, some of them went to another since it's closed. Uh, will we see uh, Ralph Gracie open up or are you and Renato going to work on something in the future? Or? You know what? I hope so. Like yeah. I've been uh, in, in, you know, during the meantime, I've been. People come in, ask about it, um, you know, and Otto will do one-on-one -on -one lessons, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's more, pri more private instruction yeah. at, at this point. Um, I, it, you know, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. So my, actually, my instructor, my Taekwondo instructor, mm -hmm. I, I brought him down there. Oh, he's... So, so he's, he's, the, he's, you know, teaching, you know, okay. classes. There. Was it, was he an Asian guy? Or no, no, no. no. His, 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 na guy, his no. name is Chris Jensen. Chris Jensen. Um, you know, you know, old like oh, okay. surfer dude yeah, yeah. from the seventies, <laughs> right? Awesome. Yeah, these yeah. guys are dangerous. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, he. Uh, I, I've actually, I've known him, you know, since I've been five years old, right? Wow. Yeah. So, so basically, forty nine years I've known him. Wow. And uh, you guys have been friends, like yeah, yeah, yeah since that time. That's cool, right. man. That's cool. Um, how. What's the future of boxing look like? I mean, is it is is it taking a back seat to the sport of UFC or is it still in the front? Because like you mentioned earlier, everybody is after UFC realizing that the money's in boxing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know what? I, I like I think I don't know. I don't know what it will be, you know, like right now I, I, I don't see it going away anytime soon um you know there will i'm sure that there will be you know just like anything else stuff evolves right yeah, yeah, um yeah. and there'll be more crossover events like like there is now uh you know as far as what was his name nagano mm, uh, yeah. you know like yeah. he comes over he's fighting but first he it's fought Fury. He mm. fought Fury and, you know, fought him yeah. and Fury had to go, you know, life or death, the yeah. tooth and nail with them, right? Just to pull out a, you know, split decision or whatever, right? Yeah. And now he's gonna fight the the former champ, Anthony mm. Joshua. Yeah. Um so, you know, he's he's making more money in these two fights than he did, he did. all his yeah. UFC it's fights. Crazy. Right. Uh so that's that's that. I And I, he's he's a He's a brick, man. Yeah, that guy he, can hit. Right? Yeah, he can. Yeah, he punches hard, <laughs> right? But I like, you know, I look at it like, you know, really, I don't know, Fury. You know, look like he, did, he, he didn't look like no. he, he looked like he drank a bunch of beers. Yeah, 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 before. yeah. he didn't look like he took it very seriously, <laughs> yeah. right? So, but you know, and that's also because <laughs> it maybe time has caught up with him. You yeah, know, he's getting you time. know, yeah. So like, you know, Father Time is undefeated, yeah. right? I don't know. Um, and so I, 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 like, I was always think that there's going to be room, you know, for boxing, um, especially because it like it, you know what, it's, it's funny because, uh, it, in the, in the <laughs> Victor Conti, I don't know, um, Victor Conti, he now has a company called uh, Snack. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and they're a big um, sports nutrition supplement company, mm -hmm. um, and they sponsor a lot of boxers, right? Uh, or not a lot, but some high level mm -hmm. ones. And he, you know, Victor Conti is, is of uh, of Barry Bonds fame, Balco fame. He was mm -hmm. the guy who was behind Balco, and he got into boxing, and he calls boxing the red light, the red light district. They let anybody in. Interesting. Right. right. And so because of that, there there will always be boxing. Yeah. Like Jake Paul yeah. just comes in out of nowhere. Yeah. Right. And changed he, the game and, for a little and, bit. And, and well, yeah. you know, he's 
and good for him. I'm, yeah. I'm happy. Right? Yeah, I was going to ask and, you about and, the Paul brothers. Uh, I've seen him one time. He's a big guy, too, by yeah, the way. He's, yeah. he's not a small guy. But um, what do you think about that? He comes in. I mean, he can't fight for shit. Yeah. But, yeah. like, excuse my so, so, no, no, this is good. So, you don't, so technically, he is not a technical boxer. No. It's more of a. No, okay, no. Okay. But, you know, he, he's fighting a guy. His next fight is against yeah. a guy I know. Oh, you do? Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan Borland. Okay. Yeah. And Ryan, he's from Northern California, right? Okay. And he lives in, I think, North Dakota or something now. He, you know, got a job on these oil fields or oh, yeah. oil, okay. like, right? And so he, so he, he stopped boxing. He stopped, yeah. you know, and he moved out there and was, you know, got it like a, you know, a career job or whatever, right? And his name is Rhino or his nickname, Rhino. And Evgeny, like, you know, we, like, I needed sparring for Evgeny. Evgeny yeah. kind of, like, run through everybody in the area, so. And you know, Evgeny's the guy I mentioned that yeah. was supposed to fight Canelo. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, or that he wasn't supposed to. I was trying to get trying him to get there, me. right? Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what uh, I heard from Lawrence. That's yeah, what I was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, oh, Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. And, so. he, and people want to yeah. embellish it a little yeah, bit. Of course. You know, I, I like, you know, we we were... I was angling to get him in those conversations, you know, like yeah. I, you, you know, were, you were hoping yeah, that yeah, was the dream. Yeah, yeah, that was the dream. Yeah. Um, so this Rhino guy. Was, so so Evgeny used to spar with Rhino, and but yeah. Evgeny would kick the crap out of yeah. him, right? You know, and just yeah. kind of smack him around. Oh, wow. and, you know, and Rhino's, you know, tough, yeah. but you know that's all he is yeah. right now is tough, right? Um, so, you know. Like I, I hope he, I hope he does really well. well, right? I, you know, I, I, you know, envision, you know, Jake Paul winning that fight, yeah. right? But he's like, you know, gonna get, I don't know how much money he's gonna make. He's probably, you know, make, make a than, million. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would think he'd make a what, million. What do you think Jake Paul did for boxing? Do you think he brought it into more of a limelight? Do you think he's is it fair that he's kind of coming in and just because of fame, kind of like the celebrity thing? No, but boxing's always yeah. been like that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Right? Boxing's all, it, it, you know, for as long as I can remember, mm -hmm. if if you're like, because it's always a, has a little bit of a sideshow act, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and remember that uh, along, there was, you know, maybe 1800s or whatever mm -hmm. like you know traveling carnivals there'd be a guy uh -huh, right with the two gloves. there'd be a guy you know <laughs> hey anybody if anybody can last around with them we'll, you know we'll give you we'll give you five bucks <laughs> right and so like boxing has always been that way yeah yeah right? it's been so, a show yeah it's been it's yeah. been a show so yeah. i'm not you know i'm not mad at yeah. that yeah. right yeah. If, you, if you know you bring some and you know what he's yeah. he's also started his uh and it's called mvp promotions mm -hmm. right he signed some boxers and he's putting some on there's amanda serrano who's a you know female world champion she's got like life-changing money yeah. you know yeah, yeah. that she would have never she would have never got without without him so like i you know i'm not mad at him you know yeah, i i think um and he's also now i think he him or Logan, they're in PFL or Professional Fight League. Logan. Also, yeah, one of them. Um, so they're trying to maybe promote. I mean, they have yeah. the platform, right? Yeah. They could post anything, and all of a sudden yeah. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, becomes yeah. a so thing. Like, and it's know, good for everybody. I mean, know. like, yeah. So, like, but, but if he fought someone serious, like... Oh, he gets smoked. He gets smoked. Yeah. Yeah. It's like years of experience versus, like... Here and there, three years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you I know, you. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, he's doing his best to train his off. Like, he's he. I'm not saying that he's not taking it serious, right? Yeah, because yeah. you know, I mean, he's got he's got enough money to pay like whoever he needs to pay. Yeah, because right? he could hire the top yeah. trainers. Yeah, he could he hire the. I mean, trainer you know, here, trainer there, yeah, wherever. Yeah, in between. like you know, if he mm -hmm. said, hey, you know, if he gave me a call and said, yeah. hey, Eddie, you know, yeah. I'll pay you, you know, X yeah. amount. You want to come on train yeah, me yeah. for a month? Yes. Yeah, you do it. <laughs> right. So so. Of course, he's gonna yeah. get better, yeah. right? Yeah. But you know, like time's ticking. What's a good What's a good amount of time, Father Timer? <laughs> what's a good amount of time of training? Like, let's say if you do it every day, even in boxing, mm -hmm. like within six months, is someone like really proficient in boxing, or is it? You, you mean, mean starting from ground zero? Ground zero. Like no, it, no, right? What's your What's your take? Like how many How many years does it take for you to be not like you know, incredible at it, but like this is a serious guy. And let's say you have the mindset, the motivation. 
You know, it's a different uh, per person. I mean, it's it, everybody's different, right? Okay. Everybody's different. But I always kind of go back. Um, I look at it like it takes you about ten years before you. I, w- I would consider somebody an expert. Wow. Okay. Right. So like a black belt. Yeah. <laughs> That's about a ten-year yeah. thing. Yeah, it's about a ten-year yeah. thing, right? Wow. And so, like, you know, I I I equate that to Martin to to martial arts too, because yeah. like, you know, when you know people say, well, you know, you're only fifteen when you've yeah. been doing it for ten years, yeah. but like, yeah, when I was fifteen, I I I could watch. When I was 15, I could watch Bruce Lee, yeah. and I'd see something that he was doing in the movies, and, you could and I would it. go back to my karate school or my taekwondo school, and I would do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, good luck doing that. Like, I, I, I could do it. <laughs> right? I, like, I saw Bruce Lee do it. I could do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, like, yeah. And so, um, boxing is the same way, mm-hmm. right? And so, like, you know, I... I would watch boxing on TV and I'd see a fighter do something and I'd say, "Oh, that hey, that was pretty smart." Mm-hmm. And let me let me try that. All right. You and know, so, yeah, it, it it takes 10 years before you develop that skill. Um I think when they start young and just even seeing like Instagram, not only with mm-hmm. boxers, but even like jiu-jitsu and and so forth. These kids nowadays, man, not only do they pick it up faster like a language, right? You can learn a language earlier. Mm-hmm. Um but they're flexible and they're fast and they're like yeah. agile. It's just incredible. There's times where someone sends me a move, you know, like a jujitsu move on Instagram, and I reply like, "Bro, if I tried that, I'd be in the hospital." You know what I mean? <laughs> I, would, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be walking for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I'm gonna throw something out. It's just like, what the hell? And and they go at it, man. They're like, you know, they're really into it. Um, we had recently a mother texted uh, my wife. Um, she has her kid going into jiu-jitsu and she's so nervous for these tournaments and so forth, you know, and, and, uh, I've seen some of these kids at these tournaments and I'm like, my God, like in 10 years, if they started even at 14 or like 12 and by the time they're 22, 25, that's a lethal like person. You right. know what I mean? It's right. like, it's, and, and you could take, and I've seen, you know, you could even take Toto, for example, he's a purple belt, but at his age and his strength and his flexibility and all that, um, you can take out a lot of people that are like older, you know what I yeah, mean, yeah. and higher ranking kind of thing. So, man, I, I think the the young kids are uh, they're they're good. Thank God when I got in a fight, none of them did this stuff because I would have been on the ground or whatever. Uh, let me ask you, and I think the people that are watching wanna know what are some of your top favorite boxers? Maybe top three, top five, and why of all time? Of Mine? all time, all time. Uh, well, I guess the, the first one would be Muhammad Ali, okay. um, just because of my age, right? Okay. So Muhammad Ali, um, you know, in the, I, you know, I was born in 69, but, you know, when it's I good first, year. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, when I first, it's a good song too, summer of 69, <laughs> <laughs> when I first, you know, that Muhammad Ali at one time. Yeah. Was the most famous person in the mm-hmm. world, mm-hmm. right? Yep. You know, so you know I, I, that's that was the first person that that I you know really watched um, as a kid, and then the person after that that I, that like you know. But he was up. a good boxer too. Yeah, he was I great. Mean, he was great. Yeah, yeah, he was great. Yeah, he he not was just famous. He not had a mouthpiece on yeah. him, yeah. kind of like. I don't know. If I, could, I don't think we should compare him to Conor McGregor nowadays. But different. that's what. Yeah, yeah. Different, different, different mouthpiece. Very yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. Very different. Yeah. Um, and you know, not only that, like it, you know, the times were different, mm-hmm. uh, and With you know, all, and yeah, all. and uh, Ali was you know like a big guy for mm-hmm. s- social justice, yeah. and you know, so like he, he broke a he, lot of yeah, molds. Yeah, he broke a lot of molds. Mm-hmm. He he lost the prime of his career. They banned him from boxing, took away his belts because he, you know, yeah. he refused to be, you know, yeah. to go to Vietnam, yeah. right? So, so there's, you know, him. He was, he was like a hero of mine. Now, now they take the belts away if you refuse to get the jab or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's crazy. I was it's just a different thing. Um, <laughs> And uh, Sug- after that, Sugar Ray Leonard, because okay. he, he was the darling of the 76 yeah. Olympics. Yeah. Uh, and then probably after that, 
Ah, you know what? I have so many. <laughs> I know. That's it's, a tough it's, it's, it's really, uh, let me see, the third. <laughs> third. I don't know. I mean, there, there's. There's so many. It's tough. Uh, what about Holyfield? Was he? You know, not yeah, Holyfield. I liked him, but I, I, you know, I liked him, yeah, right? Yeah. Just like Tyson, I yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I liked him, right? Yeah. You know, the, but they're but, big, big, yeah, strong, yeah, tight, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, Ali was big, yeah, and he, and he was trained. He was but also he was, he was he was more he, technical, yeah. no? Yeah, Floating, yeah, of. but but same thing with Holyfield. Holyfield yeah. was a technical yeah. guy, yeah. right? You know, real technical. What about he, George Foreman? Um, I liked him too. Mm-hmm. You know, I led, but uh, I, <laughs> it, the funny thing about George Rocky Foreman, Marciano? Uh, not really, no, not cool. not much of him. I like, uh, I, I, you know, I'm more guys that like in the 80s, okay. right? 80s, 90s. Um, you know, I, I, I loved James Tony, I loved Mike McCallum, Mayweather, I loved Mayweather, okay. right. Um, his uncle, I was a, a big fan of really? Ro- Roger Mayweather. Yeah. yeah, I was, I was a, yeah, I was a big fan of his. Um, you know, because those guys would fight on network TV, yeah. right? So, yeah. like, you know, I, I remember seeing Roger Mayweather a lot on on NBC. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as a kid, you know, like Saturday afternoon, I'm at home. It's just waiting for that just, event to You know, show. waiting for it. You yeah. know, yeah, because they're showing, you know, fights on TV, right? So, you know, now it's, Times change, yeah. man. Now the yeah. Super Bowl's around the corner, and, and I don't know what it is. I'm, people are like, are you going to watch it? Are you going to watch it? I was like, oh, it's this Sunday. You know, yeah. like before as a kid, you would wait for that yeah. day. It's like it would come. And yeah. You'd have everything ready. If you can make any fight happen that never did happen, in your mind, because you're a big fan of the sport, what fight would it be? Who against who? Ooh. Um, and does it have to be, I mean, guys from the same era or? You make whatever you, no, it doesn't have to be guys from the same era. Or you could do both. You could pick guys very, that, that should have happened. Well, didn't. okay. So if it's not the same era, I would, lo- I would like to. To have uh, Ali and Tyson fight. Okay. Um, that'd be a that'd be a brawl. That'd be a good fight. <laughs> yeah. uh, and just because I'm very convinced that Ali would win. Okay. Um, and you know, and you know, people that are a little bit younger than me <laughs> are convinced that Tyson, Tyson would win. win yeah. Um, prime and, and, in their prime. Yeah, in their primes. Yeah. And in the same. But that same type of fight, I would, uh, I would say, sh- like different eras. Yeah. I would say Sugar Ray Leonard and and uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Yeah, that'd be right. such a technical one, right? Um, and and because you know people of my age or older would say that Leonard would win, yeah. and people that are younger than me would say Mayweather. that Mayweather would win. Um, and a fight. Between guys that same era that didn't happen, uh, man, it just hit me with that. Oh well, it, it's also like you know from from my childhood it would have been uh, this guy Aaron Pryor, okay, um, and Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard, yeah. you want to see him fight? Um, was you know we talked briefly about Pacquiao and he was such a big thing coming up in the last I'd say ten years with Mayweather the fight that maybe never happened et cetera. Oh, and it did happen. Well, it did, but like late. I mean, like you know, not in their prime. They talked about it until the money got really good, right? And whatever. Yeah, uh, what's I mean, the so, there? so so mm. remember what happened was the the fight was agreed to in principle, right? At one point. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I remember watching ESPN and it was like the ticker at the bottom. <laughs> Mayweather Pacquiao fight has been confirmed. agreed to, you know, confirmed. It's agreed to in principle. And then it all fell apart over testing. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. I remember all that. fell apart because yeah. of drug testing. That's right. right? May, it was Mayweather. I don't know. Pacquiao, Pacquiao didn't want, oh. he, he didn't want to have, you know, to have the test. Mm. And he was saying, well, I'm scared of needles. 
Uh, and like, dude, you got tattoos. Yeah, yeah, what are yeah, you talking yeah, about? yeah, that's true. What are you it's talking about? What are you talking yeah. about? And so... Probably got vaccine too, you know? So it's like, yeah, so what, what <laughs> like, well, you're scared of needles? Yeah, yeah, Come that's on. such a weird thing. So, so you know, and then... He they, li- did he literally say he's scared of, or like they hinted it or were you... No, he, that was, he that was fucking, his excuse. Literally Not scared, I don't like needles. Yeah. Yeah, come on, man. You're a professional boxer, like you said. None of these guys are scared of anything at yeah. that point. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, you're scared of, yeah. or you know, you have some some concerns of, you know, a popping dirty on your test. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. What about his coach? He's pretty famous. Uh, Freddie Roach. Yep. Freddie yeah. Roach. Uh, you ever meet him or? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I like, I, <clears throat> I, you know, not that I'm famous or anything, yeah. but, you know, mo- like most people would know if, you know, they might not know my name, but if they it, saw me, they would circle, go, yeah, they yeah, know. yeah, yeah, you know, they know. And, I, and, you know, Freddie Roach, um, let me see, I, I went down, I was at Wild Card, I, I brought a fighter down there to train, and he was in a, he was in a, training camp for this guy Mark Mexio when he 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 beat Gary Russell Jr. for for the featherweight title of the world and I you know I had a, a fighter go down there and, and was one of the sparring partners and you know I talked to Freddie for a while and Freddie Roach said to one of one of the somebody I knew that trained at the gym down there he goes hey that that Eddie Cross been around for a while <laughs> right and you know, like guys know me, right? It's awesome. I mean, speaking to George Foreman yeah. earlier, it just reminded me. I when I so when I fought on an HBO pay per view, um, before fights they do they have like a pre fight interview, right? Mm-hmm. So like uh, before the weigh ins and stuff, they you know all the people that are on TV, all the commentators, they'll interview you. So when even if they've never seen you fight before, they you know or they you know, never talked to you before. They when they talk about you as a fight goes on, they want to sound like they know you, yeah, right? They want some substance, right? Right. So, I remember coming into the room, and George Foreman was sitting in this chair, but I couldn't see the chair. He was like, you know, it's so because he's so big, <laughs> he's right? Big dude. And uh, I walk up to him and I look at him and I go. Hey, little guy, how you doing? <laughs> he must have loved that. Yeah, yeah. He just laughed. He had this big grin. It's funny. I'll always he's, remember that. I like him. He's such a successful businessman, too, yeah. with his grill. And probably that's why he's big dude. He likes grilling. Um, that's, that's awesome, Eddie. And, uh, you know, for me, I think you are a famous guy, especially everyone that I talk to in the martial arts space. And, again, not the guy that's always at the gym, but... Everybody knows you, respects you. Uh, B Street Boxing, guys, this is a place you got to check out if you're in the Bay Area. We're going to link it below, Eddie. Please do. Um, Before I let you go, I'm going to ask the famous question I ask a lot of people. All right. Um, If you could go back in time Mm -hmm. and you see Eddie when he's younger at any point in time where you think it's a life-changing time period for you, what advice would you give to your young self? Knowing everything now. Um, okay, so <laughs> let me see. This was nineteen seventy nine, eighty. No, seventy eight, seventy nine. I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember. I'm in the fifth grade, and we have my fifth grade fourth. He was my fourth and fifth grade teacher, Mr. Shireen. Right. <laughs> And Arthur Shireen, and he's always been my favorite teacher ever, right? We had this thing where it was like, uh, you know, we're still newspapers, right? So looking in the business section of, of the Chronicle, and they got all the stocks, right? And then, so we always had like a contest of, okay, you know, from time, from, you know, date A to date B, right? Who Whose stock will rise the most, right? That's cool. And um, I picked Clorox just because it was started with a C, like my last name, mm-hmm. and it was a company in the Bay Area. 
Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I, yeah, Clor just... Clorox is in the Bay Area. Okay. This is in 79. I don't remember, you know, how much a share was <laughs> yeah. back then, right? Um, but I begged my dad for a thousand, this is 79. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a lot. A thousand dollars, yeah. dad. Because, because I wanted to know how much, you know, like, you know, the stockbrokers back then, they wouldn't even talk to you if, yeah. if like, you know. Yeah, it was all a phone. Yeah, it was, it was all just a phone. Not, there's no, they, there's they, no internet. Yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah. you know, you need $1,000 yeah, to yeah. open an account, yeah. right? Because I, I actually called somebody, <laughs> right? And they're like, you need $1,000, kid, click, right? <laughs> yeah. So I was begging my dad for $1,000, right? To put it to Clorox. To put, it, put it in the Clorox, right? And he's like, eh, I didn't do that, right? You know? You know, I, and I. Are you telling me you could have been a multi, multi millionaire, Eddie? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm telling you. My God, Eddie, you had another <laughs> career. You could have been a, a trader at that point. My God. I, you know what? It's like that back to the future, the almanac or whatever. You remember that, yeah. you know, show, movie show? It was just a great thing. I was like, damn. That would be so awesome if you could just bet on a couple and hit it, or even Bitcoin. There was a, there's a guy, uh, there's a guy that uh, paid, I think like a thousand bitcoins or a hundred bitcoins for a pizza. Did you ever read that? No. So this was like before Bitcoin was even a dollar or something, and he's had a lot. So he paid, he bought a pizza. And he paid in Bitcoin. He's like, I could pay you in Bitcoin. And he, now it's worth like $200 million. So he bought a $200 billion pizza or something like this. You got to Google it. There's another guy I would say I saw with Bitcoin because that's been like the, the yeah. rise, like you're mentioning with Clorox. Um, he forgot his password to his wallet. With like, and you can't, and he has one attempt before it deletes and erases oh. itself and he doesn't want to guess anymore. So he's stuck with that. So, man, money comes and goes, but... I appreciate you coming on the Ideal Hour, Eddie. It's been uh, uh, from episode one, if you ever did watch um, uh, Toto's podcast, because Toto had that energy. He's like, yeah. let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. And I was like, dude, come on in. No one wanted to be a guest. And I was worried that no one would come on. But, it, but you know, that changed. And then in that podcast, I was like, I, we got to get Eddie on here. You know what I mean? I was like, because I was talking about training at B Street and and how how much fun that was and what a great place that is for all types of individuals and um, the community and and myself. Everybody's thankful to you for for keeping that place running for so long. And uh, I know it's not easy because it's no. running a business. It's hard. It is. It's and difficult. I, and you know what? I, and that's one of the things that I'm trying to change about myself. Like yeah. I I I don't. I'm not a. Gr I haven't been in the past like, like a great business guy. Like I'm, I'm a boxing guy. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. and the business kind of like it's secondary. Yeah, secondary yeah, to yeah. me. Right. And and so, I, um, I I've got to change that a little bit. You know, yeah. to to in order to like keep this place operating. Yeah. You know, for as long as I, because I want it to be like, you know, a hub of the community for you know another thirty years. Yeah. Right. You know. And what is your goal with it? Do you want to pass it down one day, or do you want to have someone take it over? Have you ever I, thought about it? I mean, I haven't yeah. even thought about it, yeah. right? Yeah. I have like just you know because really it's been like my clubhouse for like the last fifteen years. It's right? like your man cave. Yeah. You, you <laughs> it's a mean? lot of people's right. man cave. Yeah. So <laughs> like you know everybody, hey, you know, I'll, I'll meet you at the gym later. We we'll hang out, you know, whatever, right? So yeah, that's that's. Uh, I haven't even really thought about it, right? I, I, you know, I and I, I have five kids. Mm. You know, one has more, yeah. um, and uh, are any of them in boxing? I, well, my my youngest son, my youngest child right now, Eddie. His, yeah. his name's Eddie. Yeah. He um, he actually takes taekwondo yeah. with with Chris. Okay, you know, in the in the back of the gym. You know, like Taekwondo is like, it's easier, right, yeah. for him, right? Where yeah. boxing is like, you know, especially it's me, very, I'm like yelling at him. Yeah, and yeah. I, and know, hitting him with a noodle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, so it's not as much fun for him right now. Yeah. Um, he's, you know, he's only 10, right? So like, uh, you know, when he's like 14, 15, and, he'll you know, he'll, he'll like, hey, you know, I want him to do both. Yeah. You know, I want him to, I want him to do both. And, you know, like I, I would love for him to, you know, like maybe compete one day. Have you ever tried jujitsu? Um, no, I, I, no, 
No. <laughs> no. Have no. you ever wanted to with Renato or anyone? No. 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 It's not your thing. No. No. <laughs> no. I, no. I like. I. I told this guy. Uh, his name, um, Brian Moore. Yeah. Brian. I forgot. He. You know. He. He wasn't. You know. He was training. He jujitsu, and he was like, I, "I'll tap you out, Eddie." I'm like, "No, you won't. You won't tap me out. I won't. I won't ever tap." Right. And he goes, yeah, I'll tap you out. And I would say, like, dude, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I don't come like on, this. Right, yeah. right. So, like, he, he go, I, I go, I'll give you a round, three minutes. And, you know, he you know, he runs in. He's a lot bigger than me, you know, sure, like, 200, you know, like 200 pounds oh, or yeah. something like that, right? So I hit him a couple times, boom, boom, you know, and, like, we're, we're, I'm wearing gloves, big boxing yeah, gloves. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have any, he doesn't have yeah, any gloves which on, Which is an right? advantage to him. Right? Yeah. And so, like, you know, I hit him, and then he, like, he gets me down. And I'm looking at the clock, and I'm like, there's no way you're tapping me out, right? And he's like... How much time was it? I don't know, like a minute. Okay. And he's like cranking on my elbow, right? (laughs) And then like my elbow goes pop, pop, right? And he jumps up. He jumps up, and I jump up, and I smack him (laughs) in the face. I went pop. And he goes, your elbow elbow popped. I go, I know. I don't care. I go, I don't care. I didn't tap out. He goes, you're crazy. I go, no, I'm a boxer, right? We don't like, we don't tap. Yeah, like, there's we no stop. Like we, if we tap, that means we lost. Yeah, right. And we, there is you know, no, yeah, no right? one's we throwing white we towels. We don't, in yeah, we don't, like, t- we don't tap out, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, not yeah. even in like in boxing, that's a very like yeah. crazy thing to do for for a coach to throw in a white towel or even. I mean, I like I'll do it. Yeah. Like I do it for the fight. Like okay. you know, if I see that Safety. my guys are overmatched, right? Mm-hmm. I'll throw in the like. It's different, right? It, if the coach, if your coach throws in a towel, it's embarrassing, but like they're they're saving you, yeah. right? If you quit, yeah, <laughs> Get out. if you quit, right? <laughs> then like like so like I will throw in the towel for the fighters yeah. if I know safety. You know, they're they're getting over, you know, yeah. they're just yeah. overmatched, yeah. right? But if they quit, you're, then you're I'm, I'm gonna be furious, yeah. right? And 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 it's because like. Yeah, I'm not gonna let you get hurt. Yeah. Right. I know. Like I like I've done this. Yeah. Right. I've been doing this my whole life. Yeah. I know that you're okay. Yeah. Right. If you weren't okay, believe me, I would stop it. Yeah. So yeah. that makes sense, man. That yeah. makes sense. And it's it's definitely the the opposite in jujitsu. It's yeah. like tap before it snaps, yeah. so to speak. And yeah. uh um I tap all the time just just to be safe. But um that's pretty cool. <laughs> you just got right back up. That's, thanks for sharing that. Uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll put it out there. Uh, if Renato ever watches this, this is my coach at your yep. place at San Mateo. Um, I still want to make him tap one time. I haven't been able to do it uh, in, in I, those three years. Yeah. And it's kind of sad to me. That ain't happening. I know. He said <laughs> that. He said one time, one time we were rolling and uh, had him in a good guillotine choke. And yeah. he couldn't get out. I trapped his body with my legs and so forth. And finally, like after 45 seconds of me just cranking. Yeah, because you know your muscles are burning holding that, right? And uh, and I'm cranking and I'm not weak, you know. Uh, you know, I got like that Russian strength yeah, in me. And um, he gets out, he's like, Ooh, almost had me. <laughs> and he just taps me right away. And I was wait, like, Are you, wait, wait, are you Russian or Ukrainian? Ah, uh, well, or both. Oh, uh, okay. So. The joke around your gym was when the war broke out, I was like, I'll be Ukrainian. Just, okay. you know, right. just to put a light touch on this crazy, sensitive topic. It's but very crazy. I know. But uh, no, I, I, I was born in uh, Baku, Azerbaijan, which is former Russia. Okay. But there they had all types of people, Armenians, Palestinians, yeah. uh, not Palestinians, uh, Muslims, um, and uh, maybe some Turks. Um, I was going to say guys from yeah, Turkey, yeah, Armenia, yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Russians, and then uh, we left in 91 to San Francisco. Okay. So I've been here ever since. Um, and it's changed here. So yeah. I don't know if I'll end up here or what. But, um, you know, I grew up in the city. I ran around those streets, man. So I know that, that uh, you know, spidey sense. I think yeah. that's a cool thing to have. I think uh, one day I think all kids should experience that. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, Russian boxers. Uh, yeah, I'm going yeah. to Russia, actually. Are you? Evgeny's going to fight March 15th. So so you're still training him? I, I'm training. not training him right now because okay. he's, you know, he's in Russia. Okay. So I, I, I see I he can't, couldn't come yeah, back yeah, or what? 
Well, I, he's got a visa. Okay. He just, you know, he, he like, fell in love yeah, out there. Yeah. Well, he got he got married. Yeah, he, married. he did get married. Oh, see. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, be careful out there. Yeah. It's a nice place. You know, people I've, have this. I've been to Russia. Yeah. I've been to Russia once, and uh, I've been to Ukraine a couple yeah. times. Yeah, you and know. you loved it, right? Yeah, I love it. There. The it's people good. are very yeah. nice. Very They're nice. safe. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh. It's, it's cold as hell. It's, it's cold. Yeah. yeah. Now that's how they survived the war, the World yeah. War Two. They yeah. couldn't. You know, they could outlive the cold is, yeah. is the thing, and not a lot of people can, including, uh, like, you know, out here, <laughs> Florida, <laughs> people in Florida. I was in Florida. I was just in L.A. It rained, and they acted as if the world's ending out there. In Florida, it gets 60 degrees. People act like it's like yeah. it's the ice age is coming. It's just weird out here, man. I don't know. Anyway, uh, guys, I wanted to thank Eddie. Eddie, I wanted to thank you personally. You're a legend. Thank you so much for coming, dedicating an hour. I hope you enjoyed this podcast as awesome. much as I, as I did. Yeah. You're welcome back anytime, by the All way. Right. So if you ever want to shoot over that bridge, you just give me a call. If you have something fun to talk about, you want to, uh, you know, for me, it's therapeutic. Uh, and I hope it was for you as well. Guys, check out Eddie Croft. I'm going to link his uh, Instagram profile. I'm going to link his website, uh, his contact. If you're ever in the area, to try out boxing. This is the place to do it. Also, they're teaching Taekwondo now uh, as well. And uh, Eddie's a fun coach. My brother-in-law has trained with him. A uh, few people I know have trained with him. He takes things seriously. He keeps you up in shape. And um, and the place is just, you know, it's got that home vibe to it that I truly admire. And Eddie, thank you for keeping it going. And hopefully you keep it going for as long as you want to and as long as God's willing. So, Thank you.